I met a very, very talented lady, none other than Harriet Thorpe. Welcome to the Pod Blast, Harriet. It's great to have you on. Thank you, Tom. I will pay you later for saying you're talented. Thank you. <laughs> uh, you're all right. You're fine. Okay. It's just such a pleasure to have you on, <laughs> honestly, especially someone like yourself, who is, I think, is brilliant. Uh, Thank you. Right. So what I was going to ask you, Harriet, I mean, I've seen you in so many things now, you know, on the TV and stuff. It's normally when I pop the telly on, you're on it. Seriously. <laughs> I wish. No, honestly, seriously, maybe it's just my luck when I'm switching on and then you're on, you know, but yeah. uh, or even on my like with the Wonderbirds and stuff because I, I love watching you girls yap away and it. it's fantastic, very funny at times as well. Thank you. Right. So what I was going to ask you, first of all, Harriet, was what made you want to be an actress? I don't think I wanted to be. I think you don't have a choice if you're in the arts or it's part of your DNA to perform. Mm -hmm. My earliest memory is trying to make my sister laugh when I was about mm -hmm. three. And that feeling of when I managed to achieve that, it was already there, you know, that feeling of fulfillment. And I, my mum was a well-known writer and screenwriter. My dad uh, years ago was an actor mm -hmm. and then was a dance critic. So the arts were, was the world I grew up in. And, um, so I wanted to, I was dancing to begin with. I was at the Royal Ballet School when I was 16, then Rombo School after that. And then um, my tits group, you can't be a ballerina with tits. Um, not not now, and well, not then anyway. And so that was that, couldn't get them into a tutu. And then I trained at drama school. But the instinct to perform outshone everything. And I remember doing, as we all do probably, shows for our parents or our friends that we made them watch when we were kids. Um, it was something that, it isn't a choice. I didn't decide to be. It mm. was who I am. It's how I'm hardwired to perform. And the segue from one thing to another was not even an issue because whether you write or paint or whatever, mm. I think also society has needed the arts, whether it's a cave painting or a Greek tragedy, we've needed to reflect our crazy world back to ourselves from the beginning of time. Mm -hmm. And some people are just programmed to do that. And I, I think, you know, it, the, it was just a normal step for me also because I was brought up in a, a world which was supportive of that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and also in a time when it was looked down upon more than it is now. Yeah. But the thing is as well, I mean, obviously, I mean, you would have started off doing theatre wasn't it? And it's like, I mean, how did that feel for you to go on, perform like a, like a theatre show? I mean, do you remember the very, very first time when you actually first went on to do like a show? Like do you mean uh, as an actor? I mean, yeah, yeah as an actor. Because it was, uh, and I, uh, yes, absolutely. Because I left drum school and went straight into rep theatre when I was at Southampton Rep. Mm -hmm. And we did, you know, sort of two or three weekly rep for six months. So it was part of our, I did lots of theatre. I then went to the National Theatre and worked there when I was in my early 20s in the Richard Hare, David, no, Richard Eyre, David Hare Company. Mm -hmm. We did all sorts of amazing shows. Um, and, you know, I, it was part of, it's the norm. It, it, to me, it's the same job. It's the same job. There are tweaks that you make. Obviously, if you're playing the Olivier Theatre, it's a mm -hmm. bigger performance. But the job is the same job or whether I'm doing, you know, I don't know, something else on, on telly or film. It's mm -hmm. the same thing. And I've always been lucky to do lots of straight theatre always and musicals and mm -hmm. comedy. So and I do comedy in theatre and I do comedy on the telly. And I did um, this last year, actually, I've been so lucky. I've been so busy. Mm -hmm. I did a, an episode of Endeavour. Um, I got blown up in that, uh, but survived. It's always good. I often don't. Um, Hannah Waddingham sadly murdered me in Midsummer Murders also last year. Um, so, you know, it's it's luck with those, whether you're horizontal, whether you're vertical. Um, I also did an episode of Doctors and a lovely thing called Tinker Town, which hasn't come out yet with um, Chiwetel. So, you know, I, I again, it, they're all different. Mm -hmm. And I've just, you know, just been doing Panto with Gok Wan. And I also did a musical, the first musical to come back called Sleepless at Wembley, Troubadour mm -hmm. Theatre, um, in, uh, 
in 2020 when we were the, it was the first show to come back after our first lockdown. Mm-hmm. So again, I'm very lucky because I say yes to everything because mm-hmm. I love working. And although Panto is two shows a day every day, yeah. except New Year's Day and Christmas Day, mm-hmm. I hate not working. Yeah. And I was saying to Gok yesterday, I'm I can't bear it. <laughs> I'm bored. <laughs> so I, I also teach, I, I teach. I have a company that I run with my sister, who's also an actress where we work um, internationally with all sorts of people on presentational skills training. So I also teach uh, students as well. So I work all the time, yeah. Fantastic. Well, I I mean, I knew you were in Panto, and that's what I was going to ask you. How did you get on? Did did the run? It was was great. And we all, we tested every single day. And the great fear, because so many shows in the West End went down, you know, um, and, and other pantos also were having to bring in people, you know, to literally step in. Um, but we, all of us, and we had a big cast, uh, none of us got it. None of us got COVID, which was very lucky. But we mm-hmm. tested every day, sometimes twice a day mm-hmm. and just kept in a kind of bubble. And it was wonderful. I mean, I love I love working, I, you know, sitting mm-hmm. on the side of that stage, listening mm-hmm. to the audience, you know, mm-hmm. waiting to start at the quarter you know because Gok and I were always early on stage waiting um mm. always ahead of time and uh you know it's just it was just lovely you know Fantastic. it's the best feeling Fantastic. and Panto is again such joy and people were so happy am I allowed to swear on the show uh well, if you like <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> listen, listen. So happy, what I'm happy that's fine happy honestly that's not a problem back Speak, for, speak well, they were really. so happy to be back. Yeah, in in our world of communication, the kids shouting, everyone was masked in the audience, mm-hmm. but the joy of the interaction, of yeah. the playing, of the games, of the laughs. You know, we had Aaron James was our amazing comedian. He was absolutely brilliant and so funny. And mm. you know, so I had about eighteen scenes and three numbers, so I didn't get back to my dressing room except for the interval. But it was wonderful. I don't want to do anything else. You know, I don't, I don't want to stop working with a, you know, whatever. Mm. I just love it. You know, what's, you know what's really great about having you on the show is the fact, I mean, you're very versatile. You're such a versatile actress. And it's great to see versatility in someone. You know, I mean, obviously you've done serious stuff, but I mean, you've did, done lots of comedy and I think you're brilliant in comedy mm. as well. You know, but going back to the COVID yeah. thing, like we're getting tested and stuff, I mean... Over a mm. year, over a year ago, I was working on a feature film for Terence Davis. It was called Benediction, and Peter Capaldi and Geraldine James were in it. And it's like each morning, mm-hmm. but I had to actually go. But well, it was getting filmed in Wolverhampton, but I had to go down to London to get uh, tested, just off Fulham, uh, near quite near the Chelsea ground. Mm. And uh, then I got told the next day, and I was, you know, kind of worried that in case it was going to come out positive you know but it came out negative yeah. but each day we it's were big. yeah each day we were on set we were still getting tested yeah. people over the things to the head yeah. and every all that stuff day. that's right every day mm-hmm. but it, it can it's easier in film and television because people are slightly more isolated you can be but when you're in a theater yeah. with a live theater and people mm-hmm. are traveling in and out mm-hmm. you know the cast as well it's yeah. harder you know to to keep it a little bubble yeah. See when you're on the stage. I mean, obviously, I've never been in a the theatre since like COVID and stuff. Do you? I mean, obviously, do you just see like all these little, like all these little colours in the audience, like people wearing their masks and stuff? That must be weird. Yeah, but again, it was in 2020 that that started, mm-hmm. and you kind of get over it because it's not about that in the end. Yeah. It's about. It's about whatever the story is, whether it's tragic or comic, it doesn't matter. And in the end, the fact that people are there, the fact that they've paid their money to yeah. come and see something and keeping that whole world together, front of house, backstage, everyone together, that mm-hmm. is what matters. And to have that experience of sharing that live moment, you know, we can, it's wonderful to have all the Netflix, all the wonderful things. We can put it on pause, go for a waz, get a cup of tea or a Baileys in my case, uh, whatever you want. <laughs> but, um, you know, it, 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 it's also being together in that moment. There is nothing like it. And whether they're wearing a mask or an evening dress, I don't give a flying what's it. I'm just glad we're all together. Fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. It's great to hear that, honestly. 
And, you know, like you said, we are all in it together, but it's just, uh, mm. you know, you often no, wonder. Difficult. Yeah, yeah. But, I mean, obviously, it's here for us for the time being, I guess, and we've got to live with it, hasn't it? It's just one of these things, eh? Yeah. yeah. And those shows uh, are backing up and London, everything's beginning to happen again. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. You know, everyone's getting back. Well, hopefully everyone's getting boosted, vaccinated, all of that. Mm-hmm. Um, and that certainly keeps everybody going. Mm-hmm. True. Uh, listen, going back to like your earlier days and stuff. Now you were in Greystock Legend of Tarzan, weren't you? Greystock. Mm-hmm. What does what can you remember about that? Yeah, yeah. Any good memories? I remember it really. Well. Yes, of course I have. It, it was absolutely wonderful. Um, Crystal was amazing. Andy McDowell. It was her first sort of job. Um, I played her maid, which was fantastic. So I was able to be in a lot of her background scenes as much as I could. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, hang on a second. Let's get rid of that one second. Decline. Bear with me. Um, <laughs> so, um, uh, it, yes, it, it, was, it was fantastic. And um, Hugh was a wonderful director. We, were, In fact, I'm in two scenes because they needed somebody for a dinner scene and they put me in a wig and made me up brilliantly um, to look like somebody else just for a dinner scene later on. I'm kind of in a blonde wig um, and very glammy as compared to her maid who was, not, you know. But also we had the, you know, the wonderful um, Joan Washington, much missed and lost mm-hmm. uh, recently this year, was our voice coach. Mm-hmm. We had um, just the most amazing time. And we were um, on this extraordinary estate where we were filming you know, up in Scotland, actually, just over the border. Mm-hmm. It was, had a really good time. It was fascinating. Fantastic. Absolutely. Because, I mean, I'm... yeah, and uh, Ralph Richardson was there. Rats so Ralph Richardson was there. Again, mm-hmm. to be in his presence, I think I was about 23, 24, just to be with those extraordinary people was, you know, mind blowing and wonderful. Yeah, it was fantastic. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Now, going back to like some of your comedy stuff, obviously, The British Empire. Mm. I mean, I enjoyed watching that. And, you know, I love Chris Barry. I think he's brilliant as well. And Oh, he's brilliant. I mean, the whole, again, we did that for seven years mm-hmm. and we had like 13 million viewers. And, you know, again, all those characters was a different time when you didn't have to get the ratings, you were allowed to evolve. Mm-hmm. So that was the fantastic thing was that, you, you know, it, it took two years to really sort of get that traction that you want Mm -hmm. and that was so brilliant because um you know nowadays if you don't get your ratings you're off you get one series and you're gone Mm -hmm. and and that's such a shame it was much more creative then we all rehearsed in it was at bbc and we rehearsed Mm -hmm. in what we called the acton hilton which was this i don't know if you've done did you do the acton hilton ever Mm -hmm. it was a rehearsal block it was a huge tower block of studios in acton and um on the top was the cafe and everybody, Fools and Horses, every single show at the BBC was rehearsing there. So you'd all go up to the canteen and there would be everybody, you know. And what was that, what was that ship thing called? It was called, was it called Triangle or something? Or was it, oh, I yeah, it was, uh, yeah, it was, yeah, it was. What the, was it called? Uh, it's not the Needham Line, was it? No. no, it wasn't as glamorous as that. It was about a ferry, I think, going back oh, and forth. Oh, Triangle, <laughs> Triangle. Yeah. Wait a minute, is that not uh, Kate O'Mara? Yes. And so everyone was rehearsing. Again, all the shows, whether comedy or tragic, all of the shows rehearsed there. Mm. Every floor had three studios, life-size studios in, and there were mm. eight floors, you know, and that's where everyone, and the costume thing was around the corner. So we just go to the Acton Hilton to rehearse, and you'd see everyone there. Mm. And and so every year you go back, it was just the most amazing, creative, fun time. And we're still all in touch, and we're still all pals, you know. It was, we had a reunion not so long ago, a couple of years ago when they were rebuilding in Ringwood, which is the sports centre we used mm-hmm. um, for all the outside uh, mm-hmm. locations. Um, they had just had it refitted. So we all went back there to reopen it. And I stood in reception and got on the phone and oh. called Mr. British, obviously. No, it, <laughs> those things were amazing. And I remember going to the, the first um, re, the audition and mm-hmm. in the script, it said this Carol cries all the time. And I thought that's really boring to just cry all the time I know what's interesting is to try not to cry because then vocally 
it changes you. But sometimes it's really, really fast. Sometimes it's really <laughs> slow. So a chance to create that character. You know, it was it was such fun. Hmm. It was such fun to create her. And, and actually, Pippa and Pippa Hayward, Mrs. Brutus and I, we both had our daughter, her first daughter, my first daughter. Um, I've only got one, but... Um, uh, <laughs> I have a son before, but um, all our kids were in the show. My son was in the show. Everybody's children were involved in it as well, in the drawers or in the cupboards or whatever. You know, it didn't matter. <laughs> I think that's absolutely brilliant. I th- honestly, I thought you were absolutely, yeah. I thought you were fantastic in that show. Absolutely brilliant. Oh, thank you. Loved it. There was a day, but- there was a day, now you can bring your kids to work day, but I, I bought my kids, Pippa and I bought our hmm. babies in the carriers to work. And there was a day when I was washing clothes that, my daughter had been sick on in the ladies' loo. <laughs> oh, and I no. thought, life is imitating art. What oh, the hell? <laughs> gee, <laughs> it's literally well, what my character would do. So brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. But oh, going back to the Acton Hilton, though, was that not the place where Markham and Wise used to rehearse as well? And then there was other people below Probably. him. Yeah. Yeah, the Acton Hilton. I mean, it's just it was just a tower block of studios in Acton, yeah. which is uh, pulled down now. It's a matter, they've rebuilt that whole area, but it was, mm-hmm. you know, it was, it, it was just wonderful to be there. Fantastic. Listen, to actually have been there and seen, seen it all happening. Oh, I know. It must, have, must have been fantastic. I know. It was so fun. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Um, but uh, I mean, obviously, I mean, you did the, like the founder success with the British Empire and stuff, but you went on to do yeah. other kind of comedies as well, obviously, and you worked with like, say, you know, French and Saunders as well. I well, mean, we were all at drama school together. We met 40 blah years ago because we were all at drama school. Oh, I, I was on that. the acting course. They were on the teacher's course. Mm-hmm. And there was a kind of a ridiculous kind of hierarchy where the actors would speak to the actors and then uh, you maybe would speak to the speech therapist course, but you really wouldn't talk to the teachers. I did. Mm-hmm. And we were friends since... We were, you know, first in 1979, I think. Um, You know, we've been friends since then. And, um, yeah, I mean, so we've worked together. Well, we didn't work together then, but they were so much better. We used to have terrible end-of-term cabarets that we'd put on ourselves. And Dawn and Jen would come out with the Patsy sisters and wipe the floor with all the pretentious actors in cravats doing terrible singing on the guitars. It was a nightmare. They were absolutely brilliant. And uh, yeah, I, I was lucky enough. We, we, I started to work with them when they did Girls on Top, the first series with Tracy Ullman, Ruby mm. Wax, um, myself, Helen Ledra. Um, mm. It was it was an amazing, amazing mm. show. And then obviously French and Saunders. I played. Lot, I was so lucky enough to play lots of characters um, with with them. So that was fantastic. Um, and then obviously Ab Fab. And I remember Jen and I were on holiday with our kids and our partners. Mm-hmm. Um, wonderful aid. Um, my husband, I'm not married to anymore, um, but we were on in, in France and Jen was saying, I've got this idea for a show. And, you know, and I said, oh, that sounds amazing. You know, and she said, I have a daughter. I said, I could play your daughter. And she said, no, you can't. You can't with those tits. I was like, I'll strap them down. It'll be fine. <laughs> like, no, you're not. <laughs> so, you know, Ab Fab um, uh, uh, came, you know, she was already thinking of that at the time. So, again, so lucky to be involved in Absolutely Fabulous, which has been just that. The joy of working with everyone. We all had such a laugh. Everybody kind of got on. And then we made the movie. We did, you know, I mean, that was sort of the icing on the cake, really, just to do that. In a time when Brexit had just happened, everybody was uh, devastated. And it was the thing when that it it was so popular with people because it was a bit of light relief in this hideous time. Yeah, and it's like, I mean, obviously the UK over the past few years, it's not been having the best of times either, has it? And, you know, it's all doom and gloom, you know, and, you know. I know, dear, but we can't crack a smile, hashtag the show must go on. Absolutely. Get off the pity pot and be positive. Can't do it. Can't do it too much time. No, can't do it. Just got to, mm -hmm, off we go. The show must go on. Exactly. Doesn't mean you can't feed your feelings, but does it serve me? Does it serve me to wallow in despair? No. Exactly. What can I do today? Can't exactly. fix yesterday. It's dead. Tomorrow's not here. What am I doing today? Exactly. That's the deal. Exactly. And that's a fantastic uh, thing to to say because a lot of people, you know, it's like, I mean, a lot of people are really kind of, you get a lot of negativity and stuff from people. Well, there is. And 
And there's been devastating things, and it's a lot to be negative about. Mm -hmm. People have lost people. Mm -hmm. It has wiped our world, what we took for granted. We now value a bit more. But everything has been destroyed, and careers and lives and livelihoods have gone. Mm -hmm. And we are going to piece it back together. But I was coaching a a young uh, chap, and he was you know, oh, my God, the world's over and it's never going to be the same. And I said, I want you to think about two places. Um, Let's say Primrose Hill in London and Blackheath, both Mm -hmm. destinations of joy. Everyone goes there New Year's Eve to look at the cities below fireworks night, Mm -hmm. picnics in the summer. Both of those places are plague burial grounds. Mm -hmm. Now we go to them for joy. Mm -hmm. Life moves on. Exactly. We need to. You know, the, what were destinations of hell are now mm-hmm. destinations of joy. You cannot. Yes, it's it's shit. There are some terrible things going on and people are bereft of their lives mm-hmm. and devastatingly, you know, c- can't pay their food for food, can't pay their bills. But just thinking, oh, well, that's that, then that's awful. No. What am I mm-hmm. going to do to make it better? That's mm-hmm. what we have to do. That's right. It's not the end of the world, is it? It's, you know, it's good to... No. You know, just good to be positive and just, as you say, just to move on, you know. That's, you know, it's good yeah, to be like that. Sure. Because, yeah, it's whatever we can do. To I work for several charities and mm-hmm. whatever I can do, it's it's got to be that because otherwise we're just wallowing oh. in a world of despair. Yeah. And that doesn't make, if nothing, they say, a famous mm-hmm. saying, which um, Anthony Hopkins said to me many moons ago, I've known him since I was very little, but we also worked in the show Pravda together. If nothing changes, nothing changes. So mm-hmm. make a change, and then things will change. Exactly, that's good. Good to hear as well, especially from someone like Cam, who is oh, he's brilliant. A isn't god, he? he is a god, a god. and he's he is amazing. God. He's on TikTok, he's on Insta. I mean, he's just he. His voice is there for people to listen to, and they should because mm-hmm. he's amazing. He's brilliant, <laughs> absolutely brilliant. I've seen some of his posts on. Uh, I'm not sure if it was Twitter or Facebook, but some of them are just class. Absolute class. Oh, yeah. Might be TikTok even or Insta, yeah. He's amazing. Oh, definitely, definitely. So, I mean, obviously, you've worked on like say absolutely fabulous, and mm-hmm. that was that show itself was just phenomenal. So funny it was, and it was also important for women at the time because it was yeah. all about women mm-hmm. comedy. You know, again, people were very. You were a wife, or you were, you know, you were, especially in the seventies, eighties. Mm-hmm. It took a while for people to be liberated mm-hmm. and own own their sort of own voice as well. Mm-hmm. And so it was, it was fantastic. It was so great. Mm-hmm. I mean, you had some great people, and obviously Joanna Lumley was, she was mm-hmm. class in it. And then she's amazing. She's brilliant, isn't she? And yeah. you had June Whitfield as well. Absolutely, and again, everybody had a laugh. Everyone got on. They were, and they are icons of British oh, theatre and film. Absolutely. You know, so, absolutely. you know, it, it was just a joy. The loveliest people, absolutely. just a joy. Especially to work with these people as well. It must have been a fantastic yeah. career. Yeah, really. it is. It is an honour, really. Oh, fantastic. But, I mean, obviously, I mean, going back to, like, so obviously, back to, I mean, obviously, you've did some serious stuff. I mean, you worked, you, you've appeared on things like mm-hmm. The Bill and, Casualty and doctors. I mean, did you enjoy doing the serious stuff as well? Yeah, as a comedy? absolutely. I love doing. Well, I, you know, I've always done serious stuff as well, which is mm. that I'm so lucky, and I've mm. always done musicals as well. You know, I've, I'm able to because. I, well, actually, the thing is, darling, that I just play psychotic women. They're mm. never normal, <laughs> and so the variety stretched across musicals, straight theatre. I did a wonderful um, play with the sensational Reese Shearsmith, uh, the dresser in mm. town with Ken. Ken, who I'd worked with at the National in my 20s, um, we then, you know, I played, you know, her ladyship, which was the most wonderful part. And again, it was just a joy, you know, and that was in the West End. It was fantastic. It was and a little bit of a tour. So I've always been lucky enough to do it all. And um, yeah, I just, oh. yeah, I just say yes, because <laughs> I work breeds work. And I don't think I'm, you know, too good for anything. I'm happy to play anything. It doesn't matter if it's big or small. I like working. Mm-hmm. Absolutely brilliant. And to me, I think you're a fantastic actress. And I'll pay later. <laughs> yeah, <thank you. laughs> 
And you know, you know, one thing I like to see is versatility, like I said earlier, and mm -hmm. I think you're absolutely brilliant. But obviously, I mean, going back to the stage and stuff, I mean, you obviously you mentioned the musicals and stuff. I mean, you've worked on like Wicked and you've did Mamma Mia. Yeah. I mean, that must have been great for you. It was, a, it was an amazing time to do Wicked was right in the beginning. Um, wonderful Miriam Margulies did it first. Mm -hmm. And um, and then, um, oh God, you have to edit this. Who was in next? <laughs> she was brilliant. Then there was somebody else for six months and then it was me. And so I was sort of third morable in about the second year, I think. So that was just fantastic. And again, the quality of the show, people, so it was like almost a 2000 seater full every night, eight shows a week, did it for two years straight through. You know, it was ab absolutely amazing. It was utterly fulfilling. Fantastic. Absolutely. So, yeah. That's a fantastic yeah. show. The two of them are great shows. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, Mamma Mia is. I also done Les Mis. Uh, obviously, I played Madame Tenardier, another crazy lady, which was, I adored it. Oh, um, and yeah, I mean, I'm just so lucky to have done them all. You know, we started also in the open air theatre in Regent's Park, mm -hmm. which Tim Peters, director of, who's revolutionised that space. Mm -hmm. um, we started a musical there that transferred to town. And that was amazing because, again, you're sharing the outside world with people. So mm -hmm. if a bird flies through or a leaf flutters down or, you know, anything, you share that moment together, not right. just because there's an attachment in theatre, mm -hmm. But even with the wind and the rain, literally, you know, people, the umbrellas go up, you keep going, you know. So, again, you share something, there's an emotional intimacy there, which you don't get in other theatres because you've got the elements. And that's, or a fox will creep on stage or, you know, or a mouse will run across or anything. <laughs> You're out in the world. It's absolutely brilliant. And you see the audience to begin with, and then gradually they disappear and the lights come up you know, as the, as the evening progresses. So again, that is the most wonderful experience, especially if it's a sunny summer night. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely fantastic. I mean, it, it'd be nice if it was like a nice summer's night, you know, and it's like it's still light and, you know, it's just the blue yeah. sky and stuff. That'd be, that'd be fantastic. And it just goes down. It just by, the, by 10.30 when the show comes down, it's just going dark. It's the most magical experience. Wow. And you don't have to sit there with raincoats and, well, you do sometimes. And blankets but it, it's just blissful but again all those things it's about all of us sharing the world as we see it or mm. love or loss or mistakes or anger or resentment or whatever it we're not alone when we share them whether it's on netflix or whether it's you know in person it's a it's an important thing in our world fantastic absolutely fantastic but i mean obviously Going like some, you've done lots of comedy and stuff, and you've worked with like mm -hmm. French and Saunders. But uh, going back to a, a real comedy great such as Victoria Wood, what was it like working with her? She was phenomenal. Well, Vic, Vic and I were friends more um, than anything. We literally live very close. Our kids went to the same school. Mm -hmm. We talked about who was going to do the tombola mm -hmm. on um, sports day those important things we had cups of tea together all the time we spent mm -hmm. we both separated from our husbands at the same sort of time and we um would spend christmas afternoon together for years um with the kids and things and uh, mm -hmm. she was the most wonderful generous amazing hysterical funny friend and yes i did work with her but our friendship was what was most important mm -hmm. and you know uh, it was, it's a, it's a loss I think about every day yeah. because I miss my pal, go, do you, do you fancy a cuppa? Mm -hmm. And that's what we do. Mm -hmm. And we also started, um, I'm now ambassador for the Moonwalk, the breast cancer charity. But mm -hmm. uh, Vic and I started doing that walk together uh, for the first two, three years. I think we did a marathon mm -hmm. every year. It's when everyone walks, and they have it in Scotland as well. Um, yeah. It's... Bras. it's amazing. Right, I didn't know. And, so, so it was used to the start of all that. No, we didn't start it. We started doing it together. Oh, no, no, we didn't oh, start. Okay, we came into it, um, and I think I've been doing it for I don't know how many years, fifteen something more than that now. Years, mm -hmm. Vic did about three years, and then was moving on. But I stayed with it, mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah, we had such fun. And I remember that day we were walking across Hampstead Heath, and she saw an acorn. She picked up the acorn, and that was the moment she decided to write. Um, Acorn Antiques, the musical. 
and talked about that with that little moment of, you know, it was just those little things that you share, you know, we were just walking and talking and having a laugh and coping with <clears throat> kids and life. Mm -hmm. yeah, and I think and so working with her was always a joy and she was brilliant. She knew exactly what she wanted. Mm -hmm. She was, I mean, her creativity was extraordinary <clears throat> and her humor and her comedy, but uh, yeah, yeah. We used to do fireworks night together in the garden for the kids as well in her garden. You know, we just had, you know, we just had, we were friends. And I think that's what was so wonderful. It wasn't a work thing. It was also a friendship and one I will treasure and miss always. <sighs> Absolutely. And, you know, it's funny be speaking so, I mean, speaking like that about her, I mean, you know, it's like, I mean, from when I was at school to, you know, like we're watching the TV back in say like the eighties and, and mm -hmm. seeing seeing Victoria doing a like for instance yeah. a stand up and then and, and doing her other things like the dinner ladies and uh, French and uh, yeah. French and Saunders, uh, Julie Julia Walters and you know yeah, it's I mean that's that was to me that was all part of like growing up you know especially watching yeah. British television mm -hmm. and you know it's just. You know, for you to talk about her like that, it's so lovely because, I mean, obviously, as I said, it's, it was all part of, like, growing up, Victoria Wood. It was just part and mm -hmm. parcel of telly, what, Julie Walters, French and so on. You know, mm -hmm. and it's that is just lovely just hearing you speak about her like that. Thanks for that. Yeah, I think it's, it's a pleasure, and I think what that's what friendships are about. And um, Jen and I are busy speaking to each other all the time you know we we do i'm you know i we do all the time text mm -hmm. we're friends and that kind of covers you know and i'm so grateful for mm -hmm. the laughs and the generosity and the friendship that we've all had all of us over the years it isn't just about business it's, it's about something else lucky yeah. Yeah. And the thing is, I mean, like yourself with Jennifer Saunders and Don French, and that, you all must have a great laugh together. You must have a fantastic Always. hoot. Always. And, you know, I could just imagine how funny things would be with the three years. I think it'd be hilarious. Absolutely hilarious. You know that. But uh, what I was going to ask you as well was, you know, out with acting and stuff like that, Harry. Mm -hmm. If you didn't become an actress, you know, what do you reckon you'd have maybe done? Like, if you, I mean, did you ever think about any other, like, when you were younger, think about any other jobs? Well, I did, actually. Yeah. I want, yeah. There were other things. I mean, as I say now, I teach a lot, but, mm. um, but I wanted to be a midwife because I love babies and I just thought to bring life into the world on a daily basis would be an amazing thing. Not mm -hmm. that it isn't filled with troubles and agonies as well, because of yeah. course it is. But, um, but I had, yeah, that, that was something that, that I thought about, mm, but not something I followed and they haven't had me in the show yet. So obviously I'm raging about that, but, um, no, I think, uh, yeah, but I think again, in, you know, I look back in youth and, everything feels like it's at your fingertips and you have a choice and then suddenly you're mature and you think, what the fuck? How did that happen? <laughs> <clears throat> but so grateful to keep going. Mm -hmm. Good stuff. And, not oh. be, and also not be defined by one thing. I don't want to be defined by anything. I mm. want to do different. Yeah. Because then, if there is that thing. If you think, oh, I'm just this, mm -hmm. then when you don't have it, you become nothing. Mm -hmm. So I, you know, I have to have other things that define me in life that are my choice, not yeah. just whether somebody thinks we're right for a part or not. Yeah. <laughs> and it's funny that you said that. I think that's maybe one of the reasons why I did the podcasting as well, because yeah. I mean, well, I mean, don't get me wrong. Take the rain. Yeah, of no, course. Take the fucking rain. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you know, I, I tell you what, <laughs> I remember the first person I interviewed was a lovely girl called Vicky Garvey, and she done like uh, charity stuff. And I thought, I'll ask Vicky mm -hmm. on. And then I got on uh, Bram Stoker, the Dracula writer, his great, great grandson or grandnephew on. And he, I was sharing myself because this was like a real proper 
guy I had to kind of research some of the stuff about him mm. and he's Bram yeah, yeah. Stoker and I was you know I've never done anything like this before and then after at the time I thought I thought to myself well who else will I get on and then I just kind of just asked people nicely if they would like to come on yeah. and Casey Ainsworth I was nervous about Casey but she was fantastic yeah. as well but you know I'm just but feeling don't you find it amazing? Had we not had this pandemic, would you have even done it? No. No. What is, you know, this This is the thing. We're not just, it's made us rethink everything mm. and reboot stuff Aye. and realise your own creativity isn't just about when somebody says, yeah, come and do this movie. Mm-hmm. No, we can take the reins. And that is why, however people diss social media, mm-hmm. and there's a lot of horror on it, and I totally respect that. It is mm-hmm. horrendous in some areas. <laughs> but it's about what can I do that's going to make the difference? Yeah. And doing a podcast, doing something fun on TikTok. I'm on TikTok. The demographic for that is 15 to 17. I'm 60 fucking four. <laughs> I'm there. Well, the thing is, as long as you're enjoying it. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't matter. And it's the same with your podcast. Get up, get the reins and do what you, you know. You know about this. You talk to people you have an ability for it and it's also again it's about your creativity that's innate in you Mm -hmm. and that's why not absolutely and you that's why everybody has suddenly blossomed into not waiting around to be validated but taking the reins Mm -hmm. and you know it's obviously you're saying taking the reins i'm absolutely really enjoying doing it especially yeah people like yourself and that which is to me i find very fascinating and insightful and it's fantastic mm. you know i will be invoiced <laughs> but uh <laughs> on, but i tell you what though honestly i think i've more or less covered more or less everything that i've did uh, harriet and you know right all I, all I can say is listen thanks so much for doing my this. absolute and my uh, absolute pleasure Honestly, and it's just some of the things you've just said have been absolutely fantastic. And sorry about the wee gremlins at the start. You know, I'm going to need another laptop, you know. But it doesn't matter. Yeah. 